Well, good morning, church. In case you were here for the first time or you were watching our service online, I'm Steve McCoy, senior pastor here, and we're glad to have everybody here as we are well into this new year. And as we begin this new year, we today begin our new sermon series. <clears throat> we're calling that series Body, Mind, and Soul. And over these next several weeks, we're going to be taking a holistic look at what it means to care for ourselves and to care for others as we are followers of Jesus and also what that means for us in caring for our world that we find ourselves in. And today we have a great example of this care as we recall once again the baptism of Jesus himself. So I invite you to hear with me the words of the scripture now from the third chapter of the Gospel of Matthew beginning with the 13th verse. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me? Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus, and when Jesus was baptized, he immediately came out of the water. Heaven was opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. The word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Now, I want to start off today, and I know this is a little bit cliche, but I want to ask this question anyway. If you are willing to share, how many of you made resolutions for this new year? Anyone? A few reluctant hands went up. Um, for those of you who answered, now being two weeks in, how many of you are making good on those resolutions? That's probably why more hands didn't go up, right? Yeah. Now, I don't ask that out of envy or a need to shame anyone, but merely to demonstrate the point that many of us tend to fall back into habits where we do the same thing over and over and over again. And even when we try to build in new habits, we find ourselves reverting back to those old disciplines of doing the same thing over and over again and wind up right back where we are at the beginning. We try it again, but then we find ourselves saying, here we are again, back to where we started. Because we have great ideas of what we should do and even how we should resolve to do them. And in fact, we see others accomplish some of these same goals we set for ourselves and we think, well, if they can do it, surely I can do it. But as the new year begins to transition back to a normal type of time, we find ourselves here in what one person said, the dog days of January. We recognize the amount of work, the amount of dedication it takes to truly make that change or make that addition into our lives. It can be easy to slip back then to old habits and to old practices that we've always done. Keeping our resolve takes discipline. And it actually involves a full immersion of ourselves into whatever it is that we are doing so we don't end up back in the same place that we are again. The baptism of Jesus is a good example of what it means to be fully transformative in your life, not only through your body, but also for your mind and in your soul. It's this act that Jesus does is much more than about a confirmation of what we already celebrated in Jesus' birth. It's an act that what author James Clear of the book Atomic Habits says, forming the habits of becoming the person that you want to be, or in Jesus' case, was meant to be. Now, if you grew up in the church or are familiar with this story that we've read, this may, might seem just a bit repetitive to you. Okay, we understand Jesus goes to be baptized by his cousin John, who humbly refuses and demurs to Jesus, and even goes far, so far as to suggest that this thing should be the other way around. Jesus, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus 
shall we say, out humbles John because, well, that's what he does. But secondly, Jesus says he needs to be baptized because of its necessity. So he is baptized. Then, as the story goes on, cue the spirit and the dove, the voice from heaven, and seen. Wasn't that nice? Now, if you're new to church, you might also be asking the significance of this alongside with what we also celebrated in a miraculous birth. If Jesus is conceived by the Holy Spirit, why this then? And why now? And what does this have to actually even do with me or my life? Now, there are actually several answers to those questions. All of them could be correct. But for those who might be hearing the story for the first time or hearing it even for the hundredth time, I want to answer by inviting you to imagine or to reimagine the significance of Jesus' baptism, not just as a pronouncement of who Jesus is in spirit, but how Jesus himself takes another step for becoming the person that he wants to be, and as in his case, is meant to be. He does it to care for himself, but he also does it to care for others and to care for the creation, so that what has happened again and again and again for Israel, only to wind up back in the same place, will not do that anymore. Faith is about embodying who we are as God's people and doing what we need to do to be the person that we are called to become. To be a faithful follower of Jesus that we want to be, it involves a physical commitment and a mental commitment, and even more so, a deeper spiritual commitment that allows us to, low, to grow and to learn and to love in this world. And that is part of what Jesus is modeling in his own act of baptism. Now, I mentioned the author James Clear earlier, who I first heard on a podcast uh, that is about church leadership. But in that, we never really got a glimpse of James' faith or what he has or if he doesn't have it. He doesn't disclose that. And he doesn't dive deep into what his faith entails. But what he does say is that the habits that we perform, the things that we do, are what define us is the people that we are. But what I found significant in his interview is his emphasis on becoming that person. A very Wesleyan of him. The act of becoming, of continual discipleship that doesn't start or stop at any one place, but we continue to grow through the habits and through the practices that we do. New Year's resolutions are approached with sometimes an all-or-nothing attitude, and in that, he says, none of this is a recipe for success. The reason is that it can be overwhelming for most. Now, certainly there are people who can make a 180-degree turn, and that's great. For those folks, God bless you. But even those folks will tell you of the discipline that it takes, of the time that it takes to fulfill that commitment. But for most of us, the focus should not be immediately on the end goal, but about its development. Taking a first step, if you will, then the next step, then the next step, mentally preparing yourself and your body for what is going to come until it becomes routine, and then as you repeat that routine, it becomes who you are. Clear illustrates this by talking about a person whom he met that had resolved to get in shape. And in fact, this person did get in shape and had uh, set a goal of losing 100 pounds and keeping it off. And they did. But he started off by driving four days a week to the gym. And he would only go in initially and stay for five minutes and do half an exercise and then he would leave. Now, just like some of you chuckled there, at first this sounds ridiculous and silly, and there's no way you're going to get the result that you want by doing that. But the deeper part of it was what he was doing was becoming the person that he wanted to be. 
He was moving from a person who didn't go to the gym to a person that did, mastering the art of showing up and taking a step towards becoming the person and accomplishing the goals that he wanted to accomplish. And eventually, he was able to build that into his life. Now, what I think that is relevant here for us about our journey of faith as followers of Jesus involves much of this. In the example that I just shared in caring for his body, it first meant that he had to care for his mind. Caring for his mind established the habit to be able to improve and care for his body, and then that care gets embedded into the soul. But there's also another aspect of this. Not every day is a good day at the gym. For us, that's true in our life. Not every day is a good day at work. Not every day is a good day at school. Not every day is a good day at home. Not every day, dare I say, is a good day at church. Believe me, I know. <laughs> but you don't stop going, nor do you stop trying. Sometimes you can chalk it up just to a bad day or a bad situation or a bad unit, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Sometimes it may not just be a day, it might be a season. But in our continued persistence to show up, we learn through that persistence that we can overcome any of these obstacles. So as we talk about baptism, and more specifically today, our baptism and what it means, I believe that Jesus' baptismal encounter with John gives us a great example of rethinking what it means for us to be a follower of Jesus. See, we tend to look at our baptism as a one-time event. We might say, even remember your, our baptism and be thankful. But the reality is for many people, especially people like myself, we were too young to remember it. But if we can understand our baptism as a first step, as a response to grace that has already been given and our willingness to be baptized or to have a child baptized as a step in shaping you as a follower of Jesus and the person that you wish to become, then we can see that living our baptism is an ongoing process. Not just another thing that we do or have done, but a part of the essence of who we are. Coming to worship, attending a class, serving in a mission, even our giving of our offerings, all of these things are habits that we embody to help us to become deeper followers of Jesus. Remembering our baptism and the practices that we partake in every day. Now, we also have a lot of musical people here, and so some of you may have heard the parable of the musician who says that I've, if I miss a day of practice, then I know it. If I miss two days of practice, the people around me know it. And if I miss any more than that, everyone knows it. Now, all that is to say that living as followers of Jesus takes practice on our part every day doing the things that help our own body, our own mind, our own souls. But even more so, these habits help us become greater as a part of the body of Christ in accomplishing our goal. The musician who doesn't practice doesn't just end up hurting themselves. They are an integral part of that whole orchestra. And they affect others around them and what they do or don't do on their part. But when they do... The result is greater than anything that they can accomplish on their own. And we've just come out of the Advent and Christmas season. Now later on in my own devotional readings for the season, I came across an article by Karen Hansen called Prepare the Way, and in it she says that Christians think too small in Advent. It's not primarily individual work that needs doing. It's not a time of exclusive private reflection. The coming of the Lord is always happening and always requires lots of heavy lifting. As forgiven and free people of God in Christ, 
Christians are called to do the work of removing obstacles that keep people from the full liberating deliverance of God. They are to level the hills, to fill the valleys, so that everyone is on an equal footing. They are to remove, then, any system, any stumbling stone or barrier that hinders the return. This week, as we honor the life and the legacy of Dr. King, we are reminded of how he took those words to heart. And as he famously quoted from the prophets of the Old Testament, that our job is to make sure that justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When we are doing those things, conducting the day-to-day -day heavy lifting of our faith, it is then that we are reminding everyone of who we are and taking another step as the people that we want to be. Because Jesus' reflection of baptism is a reflection on our baptism. Taking a step, being the people God is calling us to be and not just finding ourselves back in the same place again. But there's also something deeper that happens in this dialogue between John and between Jesus. You see, John, just like Karen said a moment ago, was thinking too small. Well, I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus' insistence that this is necessary for him to be baptized by John is thinking bigger. It's not just about the individual act, though the act is important, don't get me wrong on that. But it is about the bigger picture of the ongoing work of the people of God in the world that transforms the individual and thereby we together transform the world. Our baptism is an ongoing event that may have been a one-time bodily act but leads us into a deeper understanding and a deeper commitment each day towards building that kingdom of heaven. And so, the question for us might be today a challenge. A challenge in the new year. What goal will you set for yourself to grow deeper in faith? But more importantly, what habits, what steps will you cultivate so that you don't end up back in the same place as you started? How will these habits help you and this church become the person and the people that we want to be that makes what we do so compelling that people can't help to want to be a part of it and be a part of this peaceable and loving community of Jesus that we seek to build? How will we get there? And what is the next step that we are willing to take? Knowing that we don't have to dive all in at once, but we can participate in that act of becoming. And in that act of becoming, we start to form what we are going to do next. Now, if you are new to the church and want to know more about baptism or what all of this means, I invite you to come to our new member class today or to join us for any one of our studies or simply to speak privately. But everyone can join us in these ongoing efforts, even for our classes that are starting this week or to contact any of our staff about where you are feeling called to be a part of that step that you're going to take in fulfilling that calling. The work that we can do together is greater than what we can do on our own. If we all work together, then we can all take that next step of faith together as well. And all of this can truly help us to say that as we are doing these things, we can remember our baptism, we can be thankful, and we can continue to take steps to live into being the people that God calls all of us to be. So let us remember our baptism and be thankful. And now, may the God of grace, who calls us all into that one fellowship, guide us and be with us as we take our next steps toward becoming the people of God, towards building the peaceable kingdom, and sharing in an everlasting love with God and God's people and God's creation. May we go in that grace and peace in Jesus' name.
Amen.